Hey, Tom Rabbit, I hope you got this for your recording. Hey, YouTube out there, Tom Rabbit likes to record these. Hey, Tom Rabbit. While I've got you, I've got a question for you. Um, I've been doing a bit of reading and I've read somewhere that uh, claims that the presuppositionalist argument borrows from the atheistic worldview, given that oh, when they read the Bible. Please, please don't make me throw up. <laughs> That is the most asinine thing I've heard in a long time. The last time I heard that that claptrap was 10 years ago on Pal Talk. Well, can I explain at least what they claim? Are, are, are you advocating this? Well, it makes sense to me. And if you think it doesn't make sense, you can tell me, but I'll tell you what. Oh, I, okay. So, what I so you're advocating this, that the, the Christian worldview is borrowing from atheism? No, I, I actually said the presuppositionalist has to borrow, not the not the Christian. I said, world, I, I, the I said Christian. Yeah, well, the Christian, the presuppositionalism is presuppositional apologetic is the Christian worldview. All right, okay, I'll stand. Well, I think that's probably in both cases, but I know at least with the presuppositional argument, they can't. Uh, oh, I believe anyway that they have to borrow. Are, are, are you? Are you? Are well, you? Well, yeah, can you I can. hear it. I'd like to hear it. Well, well, Let's before you it. do, before you do, are you an atheist? Yeah, I've spoken with you several times before, and I am an atheist. Okay. Yeah, could you just tell me briefly, how is it that there is no God? Well, I'd be happy to talk to you about my worldview, but... I, I just want to know, I just I just want to know in brief... Yeah, I'll, we can get that in a second. All I want to know is, how is it that there's no God? Well, I'll tell you that I, I make an uh, indirect denial. Uh, I implicitly denial the existence. How's that sound? Of God's. Yeah, you, you know what? I, I want you listen. Listen to me. I'm tired of atheists playing verbal games with me. Okay, we're gonna try one more time. Okay, are you an adult? I don't want to go on the pre-sub treadmill. Okay, are you? I, no, before. I promise you, I will listen to what you have to say. Okay, but I simply want to know how is it that there's no God? That's all. Just tell me. What I said to you the last time was that it hasn't been demonstrated to be to exist. That's what I said to you. That's why I reject the claim of the Christian God. So, so the absence of evidence is evidence of absence. No, because I'm an agnostic atheist. I'm not claiming no. that. Oh God! You, listen, exist. listen, listen to me. You that just went right over your head. Okay. When you say it has not been that God does not exist because it has not been demonstrated that God exists. That is called the absence of evidence is evidence of absence argument. That's also an, in, that's also an indirect claim you, that the existence of facts don't demonstrate God. Okay, listen, listen. Do you understand? And we're going to get to your position in a second, okay? You didn't even understand this. If you say God does not exist because he has not been demonstrated. He didn't right? say that, Doctor. He didn't say that. Okay. You said God doesn't exist. I said, how is it that God doesn't exist? And you say, because God hasn't been demonstrated. Did you say that? Yeah, and I, I qualified that. Is that yes? Yes. Yes, it is. And I qualified okay, so that. that. Okay, so what that means is it's called the absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Okay. You understand that? Yes, I do understand what you mean by that. And okay. it now exactly that is that, that is that is listen well then so so then you don't have a rationale that God doesn't exist is that correct yeah N not at all but here's the part where I would say that I I'm not understanding you I'm not understanding you do you have a rationale that God does not in fact exist yes what is it for the same reason that fairies don't exist because they haven't been demonstrated and he's okay. where you say well right. it's a category okay. error because we're okay. appealing to an ultimate no okay yeah well first of all we have very good reasons as to why fairies do not exist do you have a good reason that god does not exist the exact same reason that fairies don't exist okay you're simply well, repeating reason what you're doing is okay we have good reasons to believe that fairies, vampires, unicorns, and Santa Claus do not exist. And, 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 what's, and what's that, please, Doc? 
Why? Because if these things did exist, we would expect that there would be some re rational and credible people that could give us some testimony of this. Do we have any instances of rational, credible people having these sightings? No, we don't, just like God. Okay, now, now well, here's the problem. Do you have, okay, do you have a reason as to why God does not exist? Because I just gave you a reason why fairies don't exist, okay? My, my rationale was that if fairies or vampires or Bigfoot or Santa Claus or unicorns existed, then we would necessarily expect to see certain things by some credible witnesses, and we don't, okay? So I just gave you an argument why those things do not exist. What is your God. argument? What is your argument that God does not exist? Just, just on the quality of that evidence, right? If I actually don't agree that that if you dodge, if you evidence. dodge another question of mine, which you have been repeatedly doing, the conversation will be over because I want to get back to your ridiculous claim that presuppositionalists borrow from atheism. Now, do you have a line of reasoning, a good reason why God doesn't exist? Is there something that you would yeah, necessarily let me do not over talk me because you don't understand this situation, even your position. I understand your position even better than you do, and I have to explain certain things to you. Now, I gave you good reasons that if such entities existed, what we would expect to see, we do not see. So we have an absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Now, what would you necessarily expect to see if God existed that you don't see? You, you've asked me two questions there. I actually do have a rational argument for why the Christian God doesn't okay. exist. You got, you got 20 seconds to answer the question. What would I expect to see if the Christian God existed? What would you necessarily... Listen to me. Listen carefully to my word choice. What would you necessarily expect to see if God did exist that you don't see? Perhaps him manifesting in reality in a way. No, 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 no. Be... Listen to me. Don't give me perhaps. You're going to have to tell me what you would necessarily see. For example, if Santa Claus did exist, what we would expect to necessarily see is that parents would report that presents were showing up underneath the Christmas tree for which they had no explanation whatsoever in different parts of the world. But we don't see that, do we? Now, I'll repeat the question and I'll shut up. And I expect you to answer the question. What would you necessarily expect to see if God did exist that you don't see? Well, there could be a number of things. Like I started to say before. If no, it's got to be necessary, not preferential. Do you understand the distinction? I don't, not sure I actually do, right? Because okay. they're telling you the If I said to you, what you could say to me, well, if God existed, I, w I would like to see uh, a bag of money on my doorstep on uh, Friday afternoon. But that's not what we would necessarily see. In order for your argument to work, it has to be necessary rather than preferential. What would you necessarily expect to see if God existed that right, you, you don't see? for the fairies and those other creatures you never okay, get pl please do not interfere so what would you necessarily expect to see if god existed that you don't see and there is by you can conclude therefore there's no god i'm not sure what kind of an answer will satisfy you as a response right if you but don't tell me if you don't if you don't tell me what you would necessarily expect to see then you cannot lay out the absence of evidence as evidence of absence argument for God. Oh, well, that's not the argument I was trying to lay out. Right? Okay, so then, you, okay, you, you are being evasive. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you one more chance. You are saying that the absence of evidence is evidence of absence. What evidence would you necessarily expect to see if God existed that is absent? Look, I'm, I'm fucked if I do, and I'm fucked if I don't. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time.
All right, bye, Doc. Darth, do you disagree? You didn't actually meet that standard that you just gave him with um, your argument against fairies and other... I, cer I certainly did. I said that if fairies existed, what well, we would necessarily expect to see that there would be some credible witnesses who witnessed these creatures. Okay? Why do you think that's a necessary conclusion from that argument? Why? Because then if we have no credible witnesses of these creatures, then why would somebody posit it? Okay? And by the way, it's also a category error. Okay? Are you an atheist, John? John, are you an atheist? John, did, did you have a heart attack there? Ah, oh, look at that. Look at what he did. He taps out, folks. He taps out. Five minutes later. Well, because I'm in a good mood, Vec, I'm going to overlook your sliminess and your deceitfulness. So tell me, how does the biblical presuppositional apologetic borrow from atheism? Is my mic working? Hello? I, I can hear you. I'd yeah, like to hear that, too. Muted. Well, he's, you've muted me now, so you've made it clear that you, you aren't ready to talk to me. So I've gone and I'm doing something else now. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, you can fuck off. You're just a slimy, another deceitful little atheist. I gave you a, a, a card blanche on a red carpet to explain to me, okay? All I simply ask you, how is it that God doesn't exist? And you couldn't really be transparent and honest about answering that, Okay. Then, then I, then I say, okay. Oh, come on, you try to put me. Listen, I'm giving you a golden opportunity right now to tell me uninterrupted how biblical presuppositional apologetics borrows from an atheistic worldview. I can't wait to hear this colossal gem of glittering ignorance. All right. Well, can you let me finish? And if you disagree, I'll give you as much time as you need. I'm to waiting. To I'm waiting. Okay. Great. Great. So the presuppositionalist starts with uh, pre presuming that God exists, right? We press them on that and they say, right, how do you know that God exists? Right? And they say, well, through revelation in the Bible. And then we say, how do you know it's true? Because God can't lie. It's self-attesting and so on. And then we say, okay, well, how do you read the Bible? And then you would have to say that you read the Bible using your senses, Right. Now, we're getting down to a bedrock axiom that non-theistic worldviews hold, right? And you would have to agree that that's somewhere where you start as well. Are you under right? the so view? Are you, are, are you under, wait a minute, are you under the view that we're uh, employing axioms? Um, no, I think that the presuppositionalist denies that they're using an axiom. Right, so what am, I, what, am I, what, am, what am I borrowing from the atheist worldview? Well, maybe he's maybe you don't know that when we talk about our senses that those are part of God's revelation. Parakeet. Everything that Parakeet. exists is no part one. Of God's no one revelation. asked you. Oh, still well, waiting. I'm still like waiting. Confused. So, so what right. you're telling so, me is that so what you're telling me. So I want to get this clear: that biblical presuppositional apologetics borrows from coherent, intelligible propositions. Ultimately, yes, from the, from oh, the non oh, 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 Okay, could you explain to me, can you give me one proposition that is intelligible in the atheist worldview? Okay, so you've, I'm sure you've heard this one before, but please let me finish because you might try to... I want to, I want to, I, I don't want, I don't want a community college lecture. Listen carefully to my question. Give me one proposition that is intelligible given your atheistic worldview. That you're a dumbass. I, I exist. I exist is an axiom. It's a necessary truth due to the impossibility of the contrary. Right? Okay. It, it has to be true and it cannot not be true. Okay. Well, here's the problem. When you say I exist, okay, um, is I a statement of ultimacy ultimacy can you define what you mean by that yeah it what is ultimate would be that which is uh, unconditionally non-dependent non-derivative and eternal and the source of all possibility when you say the i and i exist okay is the I, is the is the i ultimate 
I don't think you could apply all of those characteristics to that without all I, all I need, so all no. I need, all I need, all I need instead of a word salad is a very simple, no. clear answer. Okay. Now, so then that means that this proximate fact cannot explain itself, correct? Incorrect. Okay. If it explains itself, then it will be ultimate and absolute. It'll be self-contained and non-derivative. Okay. So is the I that you're invoking ultimate and absolute and non-derivational and has no, has, has no independent context of how it exists, it does, why it exists, it, what it exists? Look, the I, the I is just a self-reference. Listen to me. You, you listen, I'm beginning to get, I'm beginning to get, I'm beginning to get frustrated with you because you are purposely being obtuse. Listen to no, me I'm carefully. Listen to me carefully. I, I didn't say you're prevaricating. I said you're purposely being obtuse. Listen carefully, okay? The I that you speak of, is it ultimate or not ultimate? Yeah, by the definition you used, I don't believe so. However, it is... Okay, so the, I, so, the I, so the I that you speak of, okay, is not ultimate. Is that correct? In the context you used, I don't believe so, but it is self-attesting. Okay, it so okay, listen, li listen, listen, listen to me. Either you're going to have a conversation with me, or you're going to try to insert these mini machine gun community college lectures. It's not going to work. Okay, I'm trying to walk you through a step-by-step -step analysis to show you how what you are saying is completely bankrupt and vacuous. So Before the do, I that they pick it, hey, over talk me again. We're going to be done. Okay. Now, the I, you say I'm borrowing from the Christian worldview. Okay. Now, the I asked you to give me one proposition, just one, that is intelligible given your atheistic worldview. You told me it is, the proposition is I exist. The I to which you refer to, is the I ultimate or not? Mm -hmm. I think it's ultimate in the sense that it does not require no justification. No, 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 no. See, what you're now doing is you're being deceitful and you are committing a equivocation here. I asked you either the I, I, I didn't ask no, you to say definition. ultimate. Okay, you know what? Over talk me again and you're going to be server muted and you're not going to get another opportunity to talk with me. I'm getting tired of your deceitfulness and your evasiveness. Is the I that you are invoking, is it eternal and unconditionally non-dependent and derivative and absolute within itself? I would say no. There's okay, that's all I need to know. That's ground. all I, know. I need. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. No, bye-bye. No, we're done with you. We're, we're, we're done. You're a moron. So you can't have a conversation with these motor minds, okay? It's all these little mini community college lectures. Okay. I just don't understand why you expect people not to overtalk you when that's okay. all you do. Well, when I just talk with you, you just server muted and oh, he left. Okay, good. Now he's going to be server muted. Okay. Well, like no. I mentioned before, it's just a whole song and dance to try to get you to accept baseless claims as if they have a basis. Okay. Well, he's going to be he's he's, he's going to be on permanent. Notice how he says that his declaration of I. Uh, doesn't justify itself because it's not eternal and self-justificatory, -justifi but he also doesn't need to justify it in any other way, right? So what we have here is with uh, John the Raptist or whatever that's supposed to mean, uh, is a drive-by little troll, okay? He wants to make these criticisms catcalls and he runs away every time. Well, guess what? That won't be happening again. Just give me a second. I'm just typing the code so this guy can't troll <laughs> Okay, he won't be trolling again. By the way, did you get that Tom Rabbit?